Right, we'll discuss arithmetic progressions now. Um, arithmetic progressions are basically number series in which uh, every subsequent term is the same distance away from the previous term uh, continuously. So for example, a series like 3, then 7, then 11, then 15, then 19, and so on and so forth, will be referred to as an arithmetic progression because every subsequent term is a 4 units away from the previous term. So you keep adding 4, and that is an arithmetic progression. Uh, for, the, for example, the series like 5, and then 8, and then 11, and then 14, and then 17 is also an arithmetic progression because you keep adding the same difference, and that difference here is 3. Okay, so an arithmetic progression is a number series in which the difference between the terms is a fixed constant. Okay, uh, let's try another series. Let's say you have a series which is 10, and then you have 15, and then you have 19, and then you have 22. Now this is not an arithmetic progression because the difference here was 5, but the difference here is only 4, and here the difference is 3. So this is not an arithmetic progression. It is a certain kind of series, but not an arithmetic progression. So in, remember, we're going to focus on arithmetic progressions in this video, and we will talk about only those series in which the difference remains the same. So is the series 25, 30, 35, 40, and so on and so forth, is this an arithmetic progression? Yes, it is. What about 16, 14, 12, 10? Is this an arithmetic progression? Yes, it is. Here it's a declining series, but the difference is the same. It's a minus 2. So it is still an arithmetic progression. The difference can be positive. The difference can also be negative. It just has to be the same throughout. Okay? So commonly in mathematics, uh, we write arithmetic progressions in the following manner. We write the first term as A, and the common difference is assumed to be D. So the first term is A, the second term is A plus D. The third term is you add another D to it, so you get A plus D plus D, which becomes A plus 2D. And then you, the next term would be A plus 2D plus a D, which becomes a plus 3D, and so on and so forth. So if I write it again, the first term is A, the second term is A plus D, the third term is A plus 2D, the fourth term is A plus 3D, the fifth term is A plus 4D, the sixth term is A plus 5D, and so on and so forth. Now as you can see, there's a certain pattern. This was the first term. This is the second term, this is the third term, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. So what's the pattern? For example, what do you think the tenth term is going to be? In terms of A and D, it will be A plus 9D. What will be the seventeenth term? It will be A plus 16D. As you can see, the number next to d, the coefficient of d is always, this number is always one less than the position that you're looking at. So when you're looking for the 17th term, you add a 16d. And that is why we come to this very important formula. The nth term of an arithmetic progression can be written as nth term, is also written as t n or a n and this is written as the nth term is a plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, and how do you apply this? Well, for example, you're looking for the 57th term, you'll just say this is going to be a plus 56 d. You're looking for the 100th term. This is going to be A plus 99D, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's try this example. Let's say a question says that the first term, which is A, 
is 12 and the common difference is 5 and the question says find the tenth term now one option would be that you write down all the terms the second option would be you apply the formula for the nth term so we know that the nth term is equal to a plus n minus 1 times d which is going to be so the tenth term is going to be a plus 9d where a is 12 and d is 5 so you get 12 plus 45 which gives you 57 so the answer is 57 right try this example the first term is given to you as 15 and the common difference is given to you as 4 and the question says find the 15th term try it see what you get right so the 15th term is going to be a plus 14d a is 15 plus 14 times d d is 4 so you get 56 56 plus 15 is 71 so the answer is 71 okay try this question a is 12 d is 4 and you have to find the 21st term right the 21st term is going to be a plus 20 d a is 12 and the d is 4 so you get 80 80 plus 12 is 92 so that's your answer right so in this question you need to figure out the 16th term a is 25 and d is minus 4 Remember the difference in this case is negative. So instead of an increasing series, you will now have a decreasing series. Okay, so go ahead and figure out the, the 16th term. Okay, so here's the solution. The 16th term is going to be a plus 15d. That's going to be 25 plus 15 times negative 4, which is 25 minus 60 and that is going to be negative 35 and that is your answer right try this question so a is 60 and d is minus 7 and you're looking for the 21st term what is it going to be right so the 21st term is a plus 20 d okay and therefore it's going to be 60 plus 20 times minus 7 that gives you 60 minus 140 and that is equal to minus 80 so that's your answer right now we're going to learn how to figure out the position at which a certain number occurs. Let's say you have an arithmetic sequence in which the first term is 10 and then 14 and then 18 and so on and so forth. You can pretty much tell that the difference is 4. So we can say that A is 10 and D is 4. And the question says that what position does the number 62 occur? So to figure out the position, the value of N in that case, we're looking for which position does this occur at okay so it's quite simple what you do is you do that value 62 you subtract the first term from it which is 10 and you divide it by the difference which is 4 and then you add 1 to the answer so you'll get 52 over 4 and then plus 1 and that should be 13 plus 1 that's equal to 14 so number 62 is the 14th term in the sequence okay so what I did was uh, 
I used a very simple idea. I just worked backwards from the formula that we just had learned. So the formula for finding the position of n is very simple. This is equal to the last term minus the first term. And you divide it by the difference. And then you add 1 to the answer. So you can write it simply as n is equal to L minus A divided by the difference and then plus 1. This is how you figure out the number of terms. L minus A divided by D plus 1, where L is the value of the position that you're looking for. I want you to now look at this arithmetic sequence, which begins at 12. And then you keep adding 3 to it, so you know that A is 12 and the difference is 3. I want you to tell me what is the position at which this last number occurs, which is 99. Try it out yourself. Right, so the last, the, the number at which 99 occurs, the position at which it occurs is going to be 99 minus 12, which is the first term, divided by the difference, which is 3, and then you add 1 to it. So this is going to be 87 upon 3 plus 1, which is going to give you um, 29 plus 1, which is 30. So therefore, this position is the 30th position at which 99 occurs. Right, can you figure out what is the position at which 84 occurs in the sequence? Okay, so the position is the last term, which is 84, minus the first term, which is 24, divided by the difference. Now, you can calculate the difference. The difference is 29 minus 24, which gives you a 5, so the difference is 5 and then you plus 1 to it, so you get 60 upon 5 plus 1, and that should be 12 plus 1, which is 13. So n is 13. So 84 is the 13th number in the series. So here's a little exercise for you. I want you to try to figure out the number of terms in each of these three sequences and see what values you get. I want you to press the pause button now, just figure out the answers, and then press play to see what the answer is. So the answer to the first question is, the number of terms is going to be 80 minus 3 divided by the difference is 7, and then plus 1. So you should get 12. The answer to the second question is, 68 minus 14 divided by the difference is 6 and then plus 1, which is equal to 10. And the answer to the last question is going to be 87 minus 19 divided by the difference is 4 and then plus 1. So the answer is going to be 18. Okay. So we've learned how to figure out the number of terms. I'll leave you with some more questions to try to figure out the number of terms in each of these. Find the values of n for each of these series. Okay, just press the pause button now and then press play to check your answers. All right, so here are the answers to the questions I just mentioned. Okay, see you in the next video.